Hey what's up guys welcome back to our channel. So in this video we are gonna see, what if Naruto master true Bankai and combined new power with QB. This is part 5, and if you want more then please leave a like, share and subscribe, let's get in the video. 7 year old Naruto walked through the alleys of Konoha trying not to be seen. It had been a year since he'd met the Hokage and Tenten, and 10 months since he'd met Hinata. He and Hinata would both be entering the ninja academy tomorrow, Tenten having entered the previous year. This would be the reason the blonde was out now. He smirked seeing his target, the daimyo's son. He always did this when in need of more money than he had. It was simple find a tourist with lots of cash and take what he needed. Walking out of the alley the blonde moved swiftly, avoiding the gaze of any of the villagers. Walking from the ally he accidentally bumped into him causing them both to fall to the ground, as well as the boy's guards to turn. Acting quickly he helped the boy to his feet and apologized while sticking his hands into his pockets. With that done he apologized once more before walking off. Turning a corner into another alley he smirked, pulling out the roll of bills he'd taken out the kid's pocket. You know spoke a voice startling the blonde and causing him to tense. I don't think the daimyo would be pleased when he finds out you robbed his son the voice continued. He doesn't need it. Rich bastard probably won't even notice, besides I need it more than him. Responded Naruto not turning to face the man, as he judged from the voice. Oh and what for? Questioned the man with an interested tone. I start the academy tomorrow. And unlike him I ain't got no parents to buy me the world just because I wanted. Said the young boy bitterly. The man winced hearing this having lived a similar life himself. In fact he tried picking pockets before but wasn't any good at it. In fact it was only his skills as a Chunin level shinobi that let him catch the blonde in the act. Right then I'll see you at the academy. Said the man catching the boy by surprise. You're just gonna let me Kanoha's lovable demon brat go. Questioned the boy. I see no demons here, do you Naruto? Questioned the man getting a smirk from the blonde. No I don't um. Aruka, you mean Aruka. Starting tomorrow though you'll call me Aruka sensei. Hi. Anyway I have to go get my supplies spoke the boy before nodding and dashing off. An hour later found Aruka in the Sandame's office the older man with a thoughtful frown on his face. After a few more minutes of thought the old man spoke up. I see no problem with it as it would keep him out of trouble, but why Tenten? She's like me it will help her in the long run to know someone supports her, even if she doesn't know who was Aruka's reply. Hind then however none of this is to get out even to them, said Siratobi getting a nod from the man. Present time, Naruto stared at the moon with a thoughtful look on his face. Had it really been ten years since they had met? It seemed like just yesterday that Tenten was teaching him how to properly hold a kunai, and yet it had been so long ago. Back then for as long as he remembered he cared for nothing except himself, then suddenly he had Tenten, Hinata, Haruka and the old man. What is this feeling thought the boy out loud. It's love Baka spoke Tenten coming to sit next to the boy. That isn't possible, for me at least said Naruto quietly. Yes it is especially for someone with as big a heart as you have she responded. Hinata and Ino they both love you she said, causing Naruto's head to snap in her direction eyes wide. I've talked to both of them and they're both waiting for you to let them in, let them help you. That wouldn't work. Besides for Ino I'm probably just a replacement for the Ichiha he said, spitting the name out like Venom. She liked you well before she even heard of the Ichiha clan, said Tenten getting a raised eyebrow from the blonde. Don't act like you don't feel the same at least for Hinata, QB or even those other two you told me about continued the girl. I've seen the way you look at both of them when they can't see. Plus you're extremely protective of Hinata. But that's beside the point she said standing up and hugging him from behind. You above all people deserve to be happy and feel loved she whispered into his ear before standing once more. You know you're like a little brother to me she said getting a nod from the boy. I'll always look out for you no matter what, you are my cousin after all she said before leaving. Naruto smiled hearing this, she'd been calling him that ever since he returned as she was adopted by his aunt. Love huh, does that really exist? Questioned the boy quietly. Okage Tower, Tsunade looked out over the village with a frown on her face. During the week several villagers had come in claiming the Yandame's ghost was haunting the village. She of course knew they had only seen Naruto and confused him with his father. That however was the problem since only a few people even knew that the Yandame was the blonde's father. With the rate things were going she'd be forced to reveal the relationship between the two. Her thoughts on the matter were broken however when Shizune entered the room. Tsunade Sama Kurosaki Isen is here to see you along with his family. Tsunade nodded hearing this as she had scheduled their meeting for this time. Forest of Death This morning found Naruto, Tenten and Hinata heading down to the arena. It was the fifth day so they were waiting to see who would make it. There was already a team from Kiri as well as one from Iwa in the building. Both of these teams had come in on the third day. The next and final team was from Odo. The collective Kano had jowned in sight in annoyance at this as it meant no preliminary rounds. This meant they'd have to wait another month to see how much Naruto had improved during his time away from the village. 
Naruto was surprised however when he found out they weren't going to draw opponents and instead they'd be chosen that very day at the tournament. Once that was revealed the gathered genin were dismissed and escorted out of the forest. About halfway out however they were stopped as a bear mask Anbu dropped in front of the group. Ichiki, Hokage-sama, request your presence immediately. Naruto nodded hearing this before saying his goodbyes and disappearing in a cloud of smoke. When Naruto arrived inside the office of his favorite slug aunt, he was pleasantly surprised to see his own adopted little sisters there. His eyes narrowed dangerously however when he found out about why they were here earlier than he had planned. After some discussion the two sisters had been given a guest room in the Hokage mansion. Soon Tsune dismissed everyone though she held Naruto back to speak privately. Once the doors were closed the first female Hokage turned and silently looked out over the village. Naruto sighed as he walked up to stand beside her gazing up at the monument. He smiled however seeing they had gotten the crack fixed on Siratobi's face. The Akatsuki has begun moving again spoke the Godim breaking the silence. While you were gone they kidnapped the Kazikage, Gara. She paused here for a moment, noticing the shocked look cross the blonde's face. After we received word of this I sent a team comprised of Sakura, Ino and Kakashi to head to Suna. Naruto's fist clenched hearing two of those names. I also sent Team Guy when I heard Kakashi planned to head after him. In the end Sakura and an old puppeteer named Chio managed to kill one of Akatsuki's members, Akasuna no Sasori. She stopped here before once more taking her seat. As a reward for this, Sasori gave Sakura the time and place of a meeting that was to be held between himself and one of his spies in Odo. She paused here and shrugged in response to her nephew's raised eyebrow. Let me guess, you want me to go with those two spoke the younger blonde. No, I want you to go with Sakura, as well as one of our more trusted Anbu captains corrected Tsunade. Why should I even care this is probably all about the Ichiha fag to the fangirl. In fact she's probably only with Lee, so she wouldn't have to be alone. I doubt that when concerning Lee. Also I really couldn't care less about him, in fact I've had him listed to be killed on sight in the bingo book, said Swan getting a raised eyebrow from the blonde. This is more of an opportunity to find out Orochimaru's whereabouts finished the godin with a smirk, causing one to come over Naruto's face as well. Obachan if I didn't know any better I'd think I was rubbing off on you, said the boy in mock shock. No. Mischief just runs in the family corrected the busty blonde. Now on to other business said Tsunade sobering up quickly with Naruto quickly turning serious as well. As you know we are the last of our once great clan started Tsunade getting a nod from the younger blonde. As young as I look I am no longer young enough to have children. As a result the responsibility of reviving the clan falls on you. She kept her eyes locked on her nephews the entire time while Naruto fought to keep from showing his surprise. As a result our situation falls under a rarely used law created by your great-grandfather. It is known as the Clan Restoration Act. Luckily this allows you to have multiple wives. I say luckily because you already have several fiancés. Naruto's eyes widened hearing this. Okay I know about Soi-chan, but that's it. Well there is Hinata and QB, and I can't forget Ino is head over heels in love with you said Swan casually like she was talking about the weather. Oh okay wait what came the shocked reply from the younger blonde. The marriage between yourself and Hinata was arranged between Siratobi and Hiyashi years ago. The one between yourself and QB was demanded by her father when he found out you have the blood of a kitsune in you. And as far as Ino is concerned just ask around and you'll find out summarize the goddamn. Anyway you can meet your team at the Team 7 training area tomorrow morning at 8. Naruto hearing this took it as his signal to leave and walked out the door. Once out the door he quickly joined up with the Kurosakis and escorted him towards his house. Along the way the four noticed that Naruto received different looks almost as if the people were seeing ghosts. Finally they made a turn taking them away from the village towards the monument. They soon came to a split path and took the one to the left. Almost as soon as they had a kunai shot from the blonde sleeve which he quickly tossed into the trees to his right, the sound of metal clanging following soon after. It was only then that they noticed the slit pupils in the blonde's eyes. Hinohimaru, Mogi, Yudin front and center, commanded the blonde loudly. As soon as the words left his mouth three kids materialized in front of him. The first the group recognized was Konohimaru who landed in a crouched position. He was followed by an orange-haired girl and black-haired boy, each wearing the signature leaf hidite. Sorry boss, thought it was the fangirls again said Konohimaru rubbing the back of his head sheepishly. Seriously I'm thinking we're going to have to resort to plan G said Mogi with a sigh. Plan G? Plan girlfriend boss, basically we get a girl to pretend to be Konohimaru's girlfriend and effectively chase off the fangirls explained Yudin. Problem is the only one capable of doing that is Hanabi said Mogi causing Naruto to wince. I'd sooner offer myself to the fangirls than touch her royal asshole with a 10-foot pole. And you already know why I can't do it, said Mogi getting a nod from the blonde. Right anyway let me introduce you to a few people I met while training. This is Kurosaki Isan, his son Ichigo, and his daughters Yuzu and started Naruto only to be interrupted. Perrin finished Konohimaru with wide eyes. 
you know each other? Questioned the blonde Jenin. Hi I met her a few days ago. Right well Yuzu and Karen will be staying with us for a while, so I'm showing them to the house. You guys want to join us? Sure answered Mogi who immediately grabbed the two girls and dragged them forward a bit. So how'd the exam go Nison? Asked a young Siratobi. Easy remember we've taken it before. Anyway all three of us are in the tournament answered the blonde. Did I miss anything this week? Questioned the blonde after a moment of silence. Well first off your mom came back started the young Siratobi causing Naruto to wince. She killed just about all of the former council members. The one she did spare she disappeared with along with Hamura, Kaharu, and that prick Danzo, finished the boy getting a raised eyebrow from the blonde. And you know this how? Questioned Isen with a raised eyebrow. He lives with me so he'd hear these things answered Naruto getting a nod from Isen. Oh and QB's back said Konohamaru with a smirk. Naruto froze mid-step hearing this causing all the males to stop and look at him. The blonde stiffened as a familiar scent entered his nose causing him to pale. You know came a feminine voice from a tree to his right. You should have noticed me a while ago, you've been slacking off. Naruto turned to face her and saw a small smile on the vixen's face. I haven't, you've just gotten better defended the boy taking a more relaxed stance. I take it you've heard the news spoke the vixen quietly. Hi. Though I must admit it wasn't what I expected. Neither of us did, honestly I thought he'd want you dead. Said QB with a sigh. Walking forward the vixen stood in front of him before placing her left hand on his whiskerless cheek. You've grown, you're not the short brat I used to knock around anymore she said softly. And you're not the overgrown plushie I used to annoy in my stomach, responded the blonde with a smirk. We should get going before Ten Nichin starts looking for us said Konohamaru causing Naruto to pale once more. Before anyone could blink he had snatched up Karen and Yuzu and was making a mad dash down the path. The three young genin followed quickly knowing of the weapon mistress's wraith. QB however had grabbed both Isan and Ichigo and disappeared in a whirl of fire. Next morning, Naruto sighed as he stretched out on his bed. Beside him QB still laid sleeping looking every bit as angelic as she always did when he watched her. Sighing in contentment he climbed out the bed and moved towards his bathroom. Thirty minutes later he emerged a towel around his waist and hair still a bit wet. Quickly grabbing some clothes he walked back into the bathroom and quickly closing the door. Not a moment after QB's eyes snapped open and with a fiery blush on her face, she rolled over and squealed into the pillow. Once dressed the blonde emerged before strapping on his pouch and holster. Then snatching up and putting on his trench coat, he moved out the room to check on his sisters. Once he arrived and seeing the girl still asleep, he left the house knowing Konohamaru was already up and out the door, it was with this knowledge that he disappeared in a cloud of smoke. Hospital, Bakashi sighed as he stared up at the ceiling above him. He seriously hated chakra exhaustion, it had the nasty habit of leaving him in the hospital. This meant he couldn't read his beloved books in peace, as the nurses always tried to take them, especially Shizun. This was especially true when concerning his latest treasure Icha Icha nurses. Like the title suggests this book was based on those women in the medical field from medic nin to regular nurses. The story actually followed a young girl who was studying under the head doctor. In all honesty the girl reminded him a bit of Sakura, who unknown to him the character was based off of. His thoughts however were interrupted when one of the medics entered the room. He paid her close attention while she worked as she as well as others had often tried to remove his mask. Once she was gone he breathed a sigh of relief, absentmindedly he wondered how long it would take for him to better. Five days later, Naruto stared up at the night sky from his position on the wooden house Yamato, his current team leader had created. His team was made up of himself, Sakura, Yamato and this kid Sai. Sai had been the same guy that had attacked his team on their way to the forest of death. The blonde had also found that the black-haired boy referred to his private areas too much for his liking. Sai also had the ability to turn his drawings into literal creatures to attack his opponents, which explained why he smelled ink after his first encounter with the boy. Yamato he found was far different than how Kakashi was. In the short time he'd known him the man had yet to insult him or write him off even knowing who he was. Along with that he hadn't gone and played favorites during their training together, instead opting to work on the group's teamwork, or rather their lack of it. Sakura he was unsure about, though that was probably because he'd spent as much time as possible avoiding the pink-haired Chunin. He had noticed however that she was no longer the weakling that she once was. This had been proven true when she used her own monster strength in a very productive and entertaining manner, smacking Sai around. The next morning found the group at the meeting site Sakura had gotten from Sasori. Yamato had donned the disguise of the dead missing nin while he, Sakura and Sai were to hide in the trees. Sasori's spy had revealed themselves to be none other than Kabuto. Unfortunately things went downhill from there Rachimaru came out himself, apparently Kabuto had been planning on betraying Sasori. Sakura seeing this jumped out from her position in the trees and punched the ground creating a large crater and separating Kabuto from Orochimaru. Kabuto was quick to duck down, barely avoiding the strike from Naruto's outstretched Sanpakuto. Hello again Kabuto. 
said the blonde with a smirk oddly reminiscent of Kenpachi's. Before the medic could react Naruto let him feel a portion of his spirit pressure forcing him to his knees from lack of air. I told you I'd kill you the next time we met said the blonde coldly. Then holding his right hand forward index and middle fingers outwards, he spoke the name of one of his favorite Hado techniques. Hado number 4. White Lightning. Ibuto watched as the lightning-like energy shot towards him towards his heart. At the last minute though he managed to dodge to the side the attack hitting and destroying his right arm from the elbow down. Then faster than anyone could blink the blonde disappeared before reappearing behind the sound nin stabbing him through the back. Senka said the blonde before the Odo nin fell forward. Interesting Naruto-kun said the snake san in his yellow eyes shining. Now I'm beginning to wonder who would win in a fight between you and Sasuke-kun. He finished. Naruto said nothing however and turned towards the san and his zanpakuto resting calmly on his shoulder. Calmly he walked forward his steps measured not even making a sound on the rocky ground beneath him. He stopped however when he stood next to Yamato, about five feet from the sand. You should feel honored he said voice in the emotionless tone the Kachiki was known for. You'll be the first enemy to ever feel my full power he finished before raising his Zanpakuto and turning the blade, so it was held in front of his face, the blunt end facing him. Strike to kill, Sephiroth. Spoke the blonde forcefully. Just after this was said Naruto's Riatsu poured outward his spirit pressure being fully released and doubling, making everyone fall to their knees gasping for breath. The power he was putting out was enough to force everyone to close their eyes to keep from going blind. When everyone was able to see again they noticed Naruto's sword had changed. It was no longer the length of a katana, but returned to that of an adachi measuring 5 feet in length. The blade was now black with a silver edge. The guard was gone being replaced by the blades which surrounded the now skinny black hilt. In the center of the blade near the hilt was the design of a silver lighting bolt. And. Picture the Hell Domination Sword in Age A Riders of Demons and Gods except black and silver and without the jaws. I don't own it he's just letting me use it and one more thing. Without a word the blonde swiped the Zanpakuto at the snake man, sending a blade of yellow energy at him. Shaking out of his shock he dodged to the side he barely dodged the attack which dug a deep trench in the ground, as well as destroying the area behind him. Turning he stood still and pointed the blade towards the Sanin. For a moment Orochimaru wondered if he'd stopped before the blonde uttered a single word. Urkiri, the blade glowed for a second before a wave of black lighting-like energy shot out from it at the Sanin. Orochimaru's eyes went wide seeing this as he dodged to the side, avoiding the bolts that blasted holes into whatever they struck. Moving quickly he called forth a Kusanagi. Rushing forward he charged the blonde aiming to kill. He was surprised however when the boy faded out of existence before he reappeared by his side, aiming to take his head off. Bringing his own blade up he blocked the attack, thankful that his physical strength still surpassed the blonde's. He was surprised however when Sakura threw a punch at his jaw, which thanks solely to his inhuman flexibility he was able to avoid. Yamato seeing this took his chance to go for a jutsu and started making seals. Unfortunately he was interrupted as an ink lion attacked him. Dodging the beast he quickly drew a kunai before stabbing it into the lion and slicing through its throat. Looking up he noticed both Sakura and Naruto disposing of similar creatures. Unfortunately this distraction had been all that was needed for both Orochimaru and Sai to escape. Naruto simply sighed and sheathed his Zanpakuto, which had returned to normal. Looking over to Sakura he offered her a small smile which she gladly returned. He wasn't worried at all, after all the hebe would only lead him to the team. And then there will be no more holding back my friend. Thought the blonde toward Zephyrth. Kanoha, Ashina stared at the files in front of her in irritation. How was it that Naruto had other fiancés and she didn't know? Why hadn't Saratobi told her about this? Hell why hadn't he told Naruto about this? She was currently overlooking files made after a few marriage proposals by two individuals, Yuga Hiyashi and Yamanaka Inoichi. Apparently both men had glimpsed beneath Naruto's mask and knew he would be special. Hiyashi's proposal however held more weight as not only was he a Yuga, but this had apparently been part of the plans made by Naruto, Hinata, and Tenten. It also says that Naruto hadn't even known what marriage was at the time, not that she blamed him and had probably forgotten about it. Hinata however obviously hadn't and had politely turned down every suitor before they could even try anything. This left her with the responsibility of confronting the girl. Inoichi's offer however had been more for the best interest of both his daughter and Naruto. Apparently he had noticed Ino had taken an interest in Naruto at an early age and started thinking. Naruto would need the backing of a clan for any moves he tried making politically, and his daughter would need someone who wouldn't back down from anything including her. As a side note it also kept her from the Achea. This left her with the job of speaking with Inoichi as well now. On top of this Tenio, the Kitsune King had demanded the union between his eldest daughter QB and her former vessel, after finding out about the demon blood now flowing through him. Apparently he had forced Tsunade's hand by threatening the life of her nephew. Then there was Hinamori. She would have to be blind not to notice the attraction that the 5th Division Lieutenant had to her son. 
Hell even Haku had noticed it and she was hardly ever around because of her duties. She knew Soifen had noticed but had dismissed it, most likely deeming it unimportant. It seemed the only one who hadn't noticed was Naruto, who still hadn't really caught up with others his age when pertaining to certain things. She sighed as she massaged her temples with her thumb and index finger. It would seem Naruto and his father had another thing in common, they attracted women far too easily. Now she somehow had to fix this mess. But Naruto, the blonde-haired genin sat once more on the roof of a wooden house created by Yamato. After the battle he had stayed behind for a moment and took up his Shinigami form. Not long after that Kabuto's body had began to pulse before turning into a black figure with a white mask, a hollow. It had taken much for him to dispose of him, though seeing the man's soul sucked into the gates of hell had made a bit of an impact on the blonde. Once that had been done he had quickly caught up to Sakura and Yamato which eventually lead him here. I'm coming for you whispered the blonde quietly to the wind. Sasuke. Odo. So I walked through the dark corridors of the Snake Sanin's most recent hideout quietly. He had taken his last orders from Danzo very seriously and would be sure to complete his mission, eliminating Ichiha Sasuke. Walking through the corridors he soon found himself before a single black door. Opening it he stepped inside finding himself in a large room, the only light coming from the hallways outside, which wasn't much. However there in front of him sat a figure that he definitely recognized. The male was around his eyes with long black hair. He wore black shinobi pants bandaged at the ankles and a purple shirt, a purple rope tied around his waist acting as a belt. His red eyes looked through the darkness with no problem three black comma marks in each one. Ichiha Sasuke said Sai emotionlessly gaining the boy's attention. Ichiki Naruto sends his regards. He said causing the boy's red eyes to widen. They moved quietly through the trees each lost within their own thoughts. They were nearing the edge of fire country near the border to rice country. Yamato had apparently had a few safety measures in place and somehow managed to plant a seed onto Sai, which they were now tracking. Naruto himself was inwardly smirking, Orochimaru had definitely served his purpose and as such was no longer needed. Beside him Sakura was worried, while well, she may have outgrown her crush on the rogue Ichiha, she couldn't help but remember Naruto's promise to kill him. She knew he would do it too, Kabuto was living well Kabuto was just proof of that. Yamato however was still going over Naruto's battle in his mind. The blonde had shown speed far surpassing Shunshin and swordsmanship that would make the late Hei jealous. His sword however is what it is attention the most as it had abilities surpassing those of the seven swordsmen's weapons. Naruto spoke the Anbu captain breaking everyone from their thoughts. Upon seeing he had the blonde's attention he continued. What are your plans concerning your shinobi career? He asked quietly. Becoming Hokage has always been part of my plans. Spoke the blonde just as quietly. That however changed as I have no desire to simply be a paper pusher. He said smirking seeing the shocked look upon Sakura's face. Since QB's attack the title of Hokage has become less than it originally was. In fact the council had managed to strip the Hokage of nearly all the power they held and reduce them to a simple paper signer. Aside from that the Hokage should have the best interest of the village as a whole in his mind at all times. I however couldn't give a fuck less if all the villagers just up and died. Well on second thought I would it would mean more work on my part. Said the blonde shuddering near the end. Anyway I think I'll just go for Sanin rank and train Konohimaru to become Hokage. Not only is it what he wants, but as far as I'm concerned he's the only one who deserves it. Finished the blonde getting a nod from Yamato. Well if you need any help along the way don't hesitate to ask said Yamato with a small smile. Well if it's not too much trouble, I do need some help with nature manipulation, said the blonde getting a raised eyebrow from Yamato and a surprised look from Sakura. Sirite, Itsugaya Tashiro was one of the best. Upon entering the Shinigami Academy he was dubbed as a child prodigy. He would later become the youngest person to ever hold a title as a captain within the Gate 13. In time he had gained himself a nickname which applied to both his abilities and personality Hayao no Toshiro. This title however has no meaning to a few people. These people were Hinamori Momo, Yuki Takeshiro, Kurosaki Ichigo, Kichiki Naruto and Senju Haku. Each of these people either called him by name or by his old nickname he gained long ago Shiro-chan or Whitey in reference to his hair color. Over the years he and Naruto had become what people called best friends. They had far too much in common to not get along, but that is a story for another time. It was this relationship that eventually led to both Naruto's relationship with Hinamori and Toshiro's own relationship with Haku. Shaking himself from his wandering thoughts he once more focused on the paperwork in front of him, frown deepening. However just as soon as he looked down there was a knock at his door. Looking up he was surprised to find Soifen leaning on the doorway. How can I help you Soifen Taicho? Asked a younger captain gesturing for her to take a seat. Complying with his request the second division's captain took the offered seat. Looking around she whistled at the setup of his office, it had definitely improved since the last time she'd been here. Well Momo-chan and I are going down to see this Chuanin exam Naruto's in. 
We were wondering if you and Haku would come along. Shirao stopped by the 4th Division headquarters and informed Haku. Replied to Shiro eyeing his papers with the icy stare he was known for. Soifen smirked seeing this before standing and turning towards the door. Upon getting there she turned to face him once more before speaking. It doesn't start until next month, so that gives us plenty of time to complete our duties. She said shuddering inwardly at the pile of papers no doubt waiting atop her own desk. Elsewhere, nine figures stood in a dark corridor. All that could be seen of the figures was the red clouds that some of them wore. They stood in a circle a large statue behind them showing fingers large enough to stand on. Listen up said one of the figures catching the attention of everyone else within the room. I've just gotten word that the QB has returned to Kanoha. Raising his hands he silenced the whispered comments that were being passed. I've also gotten word that he'll be in the tournament portion of the Chuanin exams being held in Kanoha. I've also found out that he's encountered Arachimaru recently and forced him to flee. This got reactions out of the more vocal members within the group as that meant the brat could fight on an S-class level. It is for this reason I'll be sending in one of my elites to test his abilities. He said getting a shocked silence from the group of nins. While each of them were strong they were nothing when compared to the elites that leader was so proud of. The elites however were nothing when compared to the founding three which said a lot to each member there. Now die Dara you will take Toby and go after the Yanbi said the leader getting nods from the mentioned two who phased out moments later. And. What you didn't really think I'd kill off die Dara like that did you? Aiden and Kuzuku will both go and collect the Nibi he said once more getting nods as the mentioned two phased out. Itachi and Kissam I have a different assignment for you. The rest of you know your assignments. He finished causing everyone else to fade out. Finally only three people remained within the cave. Panem he called into the shadows. A dark-skinned man emerged from the shadows. He wore silver pants and a silver vest, his long purple hair hanging down his back. He wore a pair of black gloves that stopped just beneath his elbows, two silver bands wrapped around each glove. Over his eyes he wore a silver visor, a black katana strapped to his waist. Aizen Sama said the man called Kanem. Barakura, Ichigo panted as he looked at the group in front of him. Though they all different in appearance one thing about them all was common, they were wizards. Like Ichigo they were both Shinigami and Hollow. Unlike Ichigo however all of them, even the youngest, had full control of their Hollow side. This was a feat he was also determined to accomplish himself. As a result they put him through a multitude of tests leading up to this one. Now he was trying to draw out the hollow within him, problem was it only really came out when he was getting his ass handed to him or needed an extra boost in terms of raw power. This led to his current floored position in the combat test. He sighed before standing to his feet once more, whatever the case this had better be worth it. With Naruto, Naruto walked through the dark building carefully. Blue eyes glowed within the darkness, the slit pupils nearly clear. A single kunai was held in his right hand which twirled upon the finger within the ring. He walked calmly and silently, as he'd been taught, in the manner of the Kachiki heir. Absently he wondered if he should just head after Sai or give him a bit more time. After a bit of thought on the matter he decided on the latter and followed the strong scent of ink through the halls. After a bit of walking he came to a door. Silently he pushed it open and entered and was not surprised seeing Sai sitting there waiting. How did it go? Asked the blonde. As planned. You should have seen the look of surprise on the Ichiha's face, especially when I told him you were coming to kill him. Why he's afraid of a dick less wonder like you I have no clue said Sai with a smile. You know I don't mind you being gay. However keep your disgusting thoughts off of my anatomy. Or you'll find yourself missing a part of yours. Said Naruto his left hand calmly resting upon the hilt of his anpakudo. I am not gay said Sai as he gathered up his things. Are you sure, I mean you do always have dick on your mind said the blonde with a smirk. Without giving the other boy time to answer he turned out the room leaving a stunned ink user behind him. Not two minutes later the ink user emerged still smiling. Seeing this Naruto merely nodded before walking off towards Sakura's and Yamato's sense. Tell me Naruto-kun. Spoke Sai after a few minutes breaking the silence, he continued seeing he had the boy's attention. Why are you doing all of this? Is the bond between you and Sasuke-kun so strong that you would willingly go through all this trouble? Asked the black-haired shinobi. No. The bonds between Sasuke and I were broken long ago. I am doing this because Orochimaru's actions are disturbing the peace of Konoha. For Tsunade Abachin, Iro-sensei and I, that is an unforgivable act, and as such he must be dealt with. He paused here and turned looking the other boy in the eye. The Chihasasuke is merely a bump on the path I travel, that is all. Finished the blonde evenly, then seeing he'd gotten his point across he turned and continued down the hall. Before they could go much farther however several kunai came raining down on the pair. The two Konoha shinobi simply pulled out their own kunai and deflected them. Senajashu, hidden shadow snake hand, came the shout above the two. Looking up the two saw the form of Orochimaru coming from above, two large snakes coming from his sleeve. 
Naruto seeing this simply drew his ampakudo, then before Orochimaru could blink the blonde slash twice, cutting both snakes in half. Before he could even react Naruto disappeared. Reappearing the blonde brought his ampakudo down on the snake man. Orochimaru blocked the strike but was caught by surprise when he was kicked over in Sai's direction. Sai smiled seeing this before focusing his chakra to the pad in his hands and holding the picture outwards. Just then an ink lion leapt from the picture and descended on the nuke nin claws first. Both boys were not surprised however when the Orochimaru they were fighting dissolved into mud. Well now it seems the hebe's getting impatient. Said the blonde with a smirk. Okage Mansion. The sounds of metal clashing echoed throughout the training grounds. The forms of Yuzu and Karen could barely be made out as they moved. Kishina watched from the sidelines as the girls went at it. The girls had taken to training even harder since they'd arrived and she had to admit she was impressed. Even still if they wanted to be of any help to their family, they would both need to improve drastically in all areas. That's enough you two. She called breaking the girls from the power struggle they'd been in. That over here, we need to talk. She finished getting nods from her charges. A small smile formed upon her face at that. Now she'd see just how like they really were. But Naruto and Ko. The tension around the area was intense. On one side stood the group of Konoha ninjas standing atop the rocks with Naruto standing beneath them. On the other were the snake San and Orochimaru, Kabuto, and Ichiha Sasuke. The tension however seemed to be non-existent to both Naruto and Sasuke as they stared each other down coldly. Suddenly Sasuke disappeared, reappearing beside the blonde facing the Konoha nin. He was surprised however when he found his katana blocked by the tsuba of Naruto's. Suddenly the blonde disappeared reappearing in front of the other leaf nin. The raven-haired youth narrowed his eyes at that, he hadn't even been able to see him move. He smirked at that before his black eyes were replaced by the blood-red orbs of the Sharingan. Whatever speed technique the blonde was using he'd see through it and take it for his own. Still relying on those pathetic eyes of yours, Ichiha said the blonde with a smirk. The Sharingan is far from pathetic said the Ichiha with gritted teeth. You're right it isn't, when used the right way at least. It's the users that are pathetic said the blonde evenly. In fact I think the only person who hasn't been pathetic when using it was Itachi. Finished the blonde. Sasuke snapped hearing this and charged a blonde his Shidori springing to life. Naruto simply watched as he came completely apathetic when concerning the situation. Finally when the Ichiha was a mere 10 feet away the blonde unleashed the power of his spirit pressure upon his opponent. Sasuke fell to the ground as soon as the pressure hit him, the Chidori slamming into the ground. His lungs burned as they fought desperately to draw in the air they were being denied. His vision shifted as his Sharingan faded and he saw everything in black and white. His eyes widened as he turned to look at the blonde who was still standing there casually. I've neither the time, patience, or desire to teach a weakling such as you how to breathe. Spoke the blonde his voice sounding much like his uncle's with the tone he used. The Ichiha narrowed his eyes at that his cursed seal pulsing and coming to life. The black markings covered the entirety of his body allowing him to stand up after much struggle. Sasuke was far from done engaging the second level to his cursed seal. Raising to his feet the Ichiha was surrounded by purple chakra, glaring at the blonde with Sharingan eyes. Ku 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 you've gotten stronger Naruto, killing you will definitely be a pleasure, said the Ichiha smiling coldly. Now matter how many jutsus you copy Ichiha, you will never be on my level. Said the blonde quietly. Without another word the Ichiha charged towards the blonde. Before he could even make five steps however he was sent sailing backwards crashing into the wall. Looking up he saw Naruto standing in the spot he had last been at hand still by his side. Rising to his feet he had the air knocked out of him as he doubled over with a fist in his stomach. Bullish Achiha, did you honestly think you ever stood a chance? Said the blonde emotionlessly. You're weak, you're not even worth fighting at half strength. He stopped here to straighten himself up pushing the boy off of his fist. The Achiha got up with rage in his eyes before charging at the blonde once more. Finally he closed in on his opponent only for the other boy to disappear. Naruto reappeared grabbing the other boy by his hair and throwing him back towards the snake Sanin. Before he could travel far though, he was assisted in the form of a spinning heel kick from his former teammate. Recovering quickly the boy did a handspring off his right hand landing on his feet. Once he landed he glared at the other boy with all the hatred he could muster. You still don't understand do you? A weakling like you doesn't stand a chance against any kachiki especially not against me. Said the blonde before he turned his back on the boy and walked off. Where are you going I thought your mission was to kill me. Yelled Sasuke at the blonde's back. My mission was never about you. My mission was to find Orochimaru's whereabouts and thanks to Sai that was done easily enough. At the moment however I still have a use for you, that is the only reason I'm letting you live. Orochimaru seeing this decided to take the chance to strike. Quickly he drew out his own Kusanagi before launching himself at the blonde. Sakura seeing this called out to warn the blonde only for it to die in her throat. Before Orochimaru could even reach him the blonde disappeared before a scream of pain ripped out from the snake nin's throat. 
Looking forward she soon found out why as the man's entire right arm was cut off leaving just a nub. She gasped out in shock as a stream of incredibly hot fire, which she could feel from her spot, streaked towards the Sanon's arm before incinerating it completely. Hado number 54. Abolishing flames spoke the blonde as apathetic as ever. Let's go. Said the blonde knocking the Kanohan in from their thoughts before he walked off. Well now, it seems he's finally grown some balls. Thought the former root member holding his right arm. Kanoha, Hokage Mansion. Ashina stared at the people in front of her with a critical eye. In front of her were QB, Antenio, Hinata and Hiashi, and Ino and Inoichi. Tsunade occupied the chair beside her on a saucer of sake resting in her hand. On the table were five more bottles and saucers. Okay I've called you here because each of you has expressed an interest in your daughter marrying my son. Started the former Shinigami ignoring the look of shock from Hinata and Ino. However Naruto has been engaged since before he was even born. She continued calmly. That makes sense, you Kachiki do generally do that, though you rarely marry those who were chosen. Spoke Tenryu quietly. Hi though that's mostly because of the death of the person chosen. Regardless Naruto has every intention of marrying the person I had chosen. She paused here as she saw the look that flashed through Hinata's eyes. I know for a fact he had promised to marry you Hinata, even if you tricked him into it. Said Kashina with a smirk. Hinata blushed in embarrassment at that and put her head down. Tenryu you yourself have threatened to kill him unless he married your daughter. She quickly held up her hand stopping his comment before he could make it. You know you yourself have admitted to your feelings for him. There is yet another who has done the same. She said getting shocked looks from the girls. Fortunately Naruto is in a position to marry you all. She finished getting raised eyebrows from the three men. Explain this. Snarled Tenryo his eyes narrowing. That is why Tsunade is here. She said sending a glance at the goddamn. Tsunade sighed at this before speaking. As some of you know Naruto is my great nephew. She started ignoring the shocked looks from Hinata and Ino. What nobody aside QB knows is he is also the son of my nephew Senju Namakis Minato, otherwise known as the Yandame Hokage. She paused here hearing the gasp from several people within the room. Our clan originated from Kusa and was once the strongest in the world. Our bloodline gave us complete control over water and actually merged two compatible chakra natures together naturally. She paused here for a moment before continuing. As some of you know Kusa was a superpower during the First Great Shinobi War. This was in large part thanks to our clan, the Senju. During the war however Kusa was nearly destroyed and our clan along with it when the water supply was poisoned. Roughly 100 of us survived my grandfather and uncle being two of them. They left Kusa half of them coming here creating Kanoha. There were of course other survivors who went with one of the halves. They were the Nara and Kagaya clans said Tsunade catching the humans by surprise. As you can guess half the clan and the Kagayas ended up in Kiri. I'm pretty sure both Hiashi and Inoichi encountered them in the last war. Here she paused getting nods from the two men. Those of the Senju you would remember as the Ice Warriors of Kiri. She once again paused seeing both men go wide-eyed. During the war's lives were lost, this was followed by Kiri's bloodline purge and the QB attack, each affecting the Senju heavily. She paused here seeing the mention Vixen wince. In the end Naruto and I were the only ones left. She finished with a sigh. Luckily my uncle had thought ahead and created the Clan Restoration Act. Said Tsunade watching as the two male shinobis went wide-eyed in realization. Clan Restoration Act? Asked Ino quietly. In the event of a clan being wiped down to simple handful of members, this allows any males to have a minimum of four wives. It's why many parents were pushing their daughters to chase the Ichiha brat. Said Inoichi getting a nod from Hiashi. Before anything could be said a loud ringing could be heard causing Kashina to groan. Digging in her pants pocket she pulled out the cell phone all Shinigami carry. Reading the message on it she couldn't help but smile. It seems you'll get to meet the two other girls as well as Naruto's cousin and his best friend. Apparently they found out about the tournament and decided to come check it out. Said the black-haired woman. Once again before anything could be said something stopped it. This time it was a loud cry of Tsunade Bachin echoing throughout the house. And the Dan Kanohamaru called the slug Sanon. Not long later the Suratobi came into the room with Karen and Yuzu not far behind him. Panting the boy looked up at her with a large smile on his face. What's up asked Tsunade seeing this. Naruto Niasen sent him a message. Said Yuzu catching everyone's attention. What did he say questioned Kashina. He said he was on his way back from his mission. Said Karen before Kanohamaru took over. He said he's giving up his claim on the Hokage title and he's going to train me to take it. Said the boy beaming and getting a groan from Tsunade. What's wrong asked Kashina. That brat just doomed me to a longer time doing paperwork. Said Swan with her eyebrow twitching. Did he say anything else? Asked Hinata. No, but he sent this for you Bachin said the Saratobi boy handing her a paper. Reading it the slug princess had to stop herself from smiling like an idiot and settled for a smirk. Well nephew you do live up to expectations. Thought Tsunade. 
Waco Mundo. Waco Mundo is located between the living world and soul society. It can only be accessed by ripping a hole in the dimensional fabric separating the worlds. Unlike Soul Society, where travel requires specialized gates, the residents here can travel to and from Waco Mundo at will. This was the land where hollows roamed. The landscape was like an endless white desert with dunes scattered throughout the place. The desert is littered with what appeared to be boulders and shriveled trees, though they were actually forms of quartz. This is the world in which Towson Canham currently found himself. Walking around he quickly found himself at his desired designation, judging from the Riatsu he felt. Elquiora called Kanem into the darkness which he always saw. Thousand came the desired response. Azen Sama has a new mission for you. Said Kanem. Our duty was probably the most boring job any Chuanin could receive. This was especially true when one was guarding two places the village gates and the Hokage's office. Guarding the gates however was probably the worst as those who did it couldn't involve themselves in the activities happening within the walls. This was especially true when it came time for the Chuanin exam finals, when it seemed like the village held a festival for the last two weeks of that month. Of course the most important of people only come within two days before the tournament, mostly because of their busy schedules. As such one would see many people within those days from a country's daimyo down to just regular people. However out of all the times Katetsu had done this, he had never seen a group gathered like what he was seeing now. In front of him stood 16 people eight of them female. As he looked over the group he couldn't help but think a few of them were a bit weird, one of them even had tattoos where his eyebrows should be. After he finished looking everything over he allowed the group to pass through. So this is Naruto's village, not bad. Said one of the boys as he looked out at the village. He stood at 5'7 and had silky black hair and a pair of glasses framing his face. I could get used to a place like this. Just the smell alone has Karakara beat. Said one of the girls. She stood at 5'1 and had short spiky black hair. Well let's look around this place, then we can head to his house. Said Ichigo getting nods of consent from the group. Elsewhere, Naruto sighed as he sat within the training grounds of the Senju clan house. The house itself had been hidden beneath a very powerful Jinjutsu that not even a Dejutsu could see through. In fact it was so complex that only those of Senju blood could see through it. Of course those trusted by the clan could also access the grounds, as a sample of their chakra was entered into the seal sustaining the Jinjutsu. It was here that the scrolls for the clan's most powerful techniques were hidden away. This included Shadai's Mokuten Jutsu scrolls and the Nidame's Suiten Jutsu scrolls. Along with Tsunade's medical and strength-enhancing Jutsu scrolls. And finally the Yandame's scrolls for his few Jutsu and Ninjutsu including his infamous oration No Jutsu. It is also here that the scroll of Forbidden Seals was usually kept unless the Hokage needed to check over it. As it stood there were only four people who could now access this place. These people were Tsunade, Naruto, Tenten, thanks to the adoption ritual she did with Tsunade, and Yamato, due to the Shadai's DNA within his body. As such this was the perfect place for him to train. As he sat within his meditation he idly checked up on his clone's progress. True to his word Yamato had helped him out with nature manipulation. At the moment he had nearly a thousand clones working on it. One group was focused solely on water manipulation. Another he had focused on furthering his wind manipulation, a third was focused on merging the two and forming ice. As the clones did this he himself was doing something far more important that he just knew would come in handy soon. He just hoped he could accomplish his goal before that time came. Okage Mansion, Training Grounds. Aaron panted as she glared at the tree in front of her. How Yuzu had managed to do this she had no clue, and it was starting to piss her off. Sighing she glanced at the notes Yuzu had left for her. These notes were actually the training guide Naruto had made for Yuzu, and the first thing he had down was the mastering of tree climbing. On top of that he wanted it done while wearing 80 pounds of extra weight, 20 pounds on each limb. Luckily for her she'd started her weight training at the same time as her twin. After that was learning how to walk on water, followed by jutsu training, and all of this came after the physical exercises he wanted done. With help from Yuzu and Kishina Obasan, she had already managed to gain access to her chakra. Now all she had to do was learn to control it. She had already completed the leaf spinning exercise which would explain her moving on to tree climbing. With a sigh she stood back on her feet determined to finish this exercise and move on. All this was going on Yuzu was having her own problems. With Kishina Oba-san's help she had managed to access her Riatsu and subsequently grasped her birthright, the power of her Shinigami form. Like her sister, she found herself doing control exercises, which would explain why she was trying to learn meditation. She sighed to herself wishing not for the first time Naruto had taught her Kage Bunshin. Unfortunately he had told her that she didn't have the chakra capacity to even make one clone without ending up in the hospital from severe chakra exhaustion. Even with all her training her reserves were only as much as a rookie chunin, Kage Bunshin required you have the reserves of a jamin. After this she had to learn Shunpo, then it was Kido training, then Tejutsu, and then Zanpakuto training. 
She sighed at that it was going to be a long day. Still if this was what she had to do to protect Karen she'd do it. She smiled at that having no idea her sister was mirroring her thoughts. Across from them Tenton stood atop of the lake, twin water dragon surrounding her body. Over the past few years Tenton had gotten water manipulation down to an art. With Tsunade's blood now running through her, thanks to an adoption ritual, she found water element ninjutsu came to her easily. Along with this her already impressive chakra control had increased exponentially. All in all the girls were all fairly busy training. Yuga estate, Anada panted as she stared down her opponent. Across from her Niji was in shock with the girl matching him blow for blow. Throughout their entire spar he had yet to close a single tenketsu on the younger girl. Hanabi and Hiashi also watched a girl the former of the two in shock, knowing now that her sister had always gone easy on her. It was then that the Hugh Iris changed her stance up. One hand she raised vertically until it stood straight up. The other hand she held up, her index and middle fingers straight up in front of her mouth, while her other fingers were closed. Almost as soon as she did this the divination field appeared under her causing everyone's eyes to widen. Anada's chakra level began to steadily rise before topping off at Jounin level. Finally the girl opened her eyes, the veins around them bulging as her Byakugan flared to life. Niji seeing this stiffened as he remembered the last time he'd seen this, that guy still couldn't walk. Okay you win said Niji quickly dropping out of his stance and moving over towards Hiashi, as quickly as his Hyuga posture would allow him. The Ashi smirked at that, Hinata had definitely become feared within the Hyuga clan in the last few years. In fact there wasn't a single person within the clan who didn't acknowledge her strength or fear her jutsu. While everyone noteworthy could close Tenketsu points, Hinata stood alone in saying she could destroy them. That however only happened when she used the jutsu to its fullest. Any other time it would simply close them. On the plus side though the move doubled as a defense becoming the first double Hyuga technique since the Katen. He couldn't wait to see what she'd do during the tournament. That thought alone made him giddy enough to show his excitement, though he quickly managed to rein in the impulse. Bodo, the Chihasasuke was livid. He had spent nearly three years here in this damn cave training under the snake Sanin. Even still Naruto, the dead last of his class, was still stronger than him. He was in a Chiha elite, blessed with the greatest bloodline in existence, yet the blonde still continued to surpass him in power. If that wasn't bad enough the blonde had the nerve to speak down to him of all people. He was acting as if he was of the noblest blood possible using the name of a clan that probably didn't even exist. And. Man this guy is full of himself to add to that he had beaten him and acted as if a child could have done the same. It didn't matter though, the next time they met he'd take the blonde's power for himself and use it to kill his brother. With that thought he smirked to himself before walking out towards the training area, he needed one last training session. Okage Mansion, the room was silent with the only noise coming from the television that the gathered group was watching. Naruto had arrived about three hours earlier nearly dead to the world. Even after all these years he still couldn't recover fast from the mental exhaustion training with clones gave him. He had then staggered into the living room to find everyone lying around watching TV. Karen and Yuzu were on the floor, Tenten was in a reclining chair, and QB was sitting on the couch. Seeing this he joined Karen and Yuzu on the floor, though he was sitting with his back against the couch. On the TV was the latest Snow Princess movie entitled Clash in the Land of Snow. The movie actually followed the real-life events of Kazuhana Koyuki and a team of Konoha Shinobi that led to Koyuki gaining the throne in Snow Country. On the screen they saw younger Naruto his short blonde hair and black trench coat flapping in the wind as he stood up in the trees with a frown on his face. Yuzu, Karen, and QB watched transfixed, while Tenten having seen the movie before had an amused smile on her face as she took in the look on her cousin's face. The girls watched in horror as Naruto fell from the sky after having his rope cut. Then much to their shock the blonde flipped in mid-air bit his finger and ran through seals before summoning a large toad. After they landed and he thanked and dismissed the toad, he summoned one of the rare snow foxes and proceeded to chase after the retreating Dotu, all the while talking about how he was going to enjoy maiming the wannabe Batman. Ani san how come you never told us you were in a movie? Questioned Yuzu turning towards the aforementioned teen. Because honestly Yuzu I didn't know. Still those bastards better had deposited a rather nice sum into my account or there's going to be problems. Stated the blonde as he flexed his now clawed hand getting a giggle from the brown haired girl. Anything further was cut off as they heard someone knocking on the door. Pausing the movie the blonde sent a still giggling Yuzu off to open the door. It was quiet for a few moments before a rather loud scream cut through the air. Faster than most could blink Naruto had flashed out and appeared at the door only to freeze at the side in front of him. Outside his door stood about 15 people with sweat drops as they watched the 16th getting squeezed to death by a rather happy Yuzu. Taking a look around himself, Naruto had to whistle at the group that had gathered. First there was of course Soifen, Haku, Hinamori and Toshiro. The next he saw was Yuchiru flanked on both sides by Ikaku and Yamichika. On the other side stood Sato, Tatsuki, Orihim, Renji, Ishida, and Rukia. 
Ichigo was on the ground being crushed to death, and Yoruchi and Urahara were bringing up the rear. Yuzu are you going to stay there killing your brother or go back inside and finish watching the movie? Said Naruto who smirked when the girl got back up and rushed into the house. Boy Ichigo you better not be dead. I don't have the time to be going to your funeral. Said the blonde with a smirk as he watched a grumbling teen try to pick himself off the ground. Well come on in you guys. Said the blonde motioning for the group to enter before he found a smiling Momo by his side, joined shortly afterwards by Soifen, who took her usual place on his right. As they entered each of them had to admit they were impressed with the place. Even Yuruchi, Soifen, and Rukia had to admit it, though the place was smaller than either the Shihuin or Kachiki estates. Still this place felt far more comfortable than either of the two estates. It lacked the traditional Japanese themes that those estates held and was more of a western-style mansion. The floor in the entrance was made of marble as was the kitchen and bathrooms. The living room however had a soft white carpet along with several chairs and couches of the same color, with a small coffee table in the center. Upon entering the room however they found two more girls aside from Yuzu and Karen. After the introductions were made they finally noticed the 57 flat screen TV attached to the wall. So what are you guys watching? Asked Ichigo as he plopped down with Rukia on the couch. It's called Yukahim, Snow Princess. Clash in the Land of Snow. Narinai is in it. Answered Karen getting shocked looks from the group and a sigh from Naruto. How about I just start it over, since the girls came in after the movie started anyway, and Naruto didn't come until near the end. Said Tenten getting nods from the group before starting the movie over. One week later, the village was crowded as people from all over had come to attend the final round of the Chunin selection exams. Those participating in the exam had spent the month as best as they could and were anxious to see just what results their training produced. The arena was packed full of people from commoners to nobles, civilians to shinobi. Many of those gathered were looking forward to seeing the Hugh Gyrus and what she could do. Others there wanted to see the weapons mistress who was also finally competing once again. Iwa also had some supporters in the crowd, many looking forward to seeing the Tsuchikage's grandson in action. The various lords however were more interested in the return of Konoha Shinigami, who had been rumored to have been killed a few years back. Those same lords had also been present the day when a young boy with unknown origins beat not only the highly praised prodigy of the Hyuga clan, but also scared the Ichibi no Shikaku back into his vessel. Many of the higher-ups in the village knew that the last time there was a turnout like this was when word of the Ichiha survivor competing had been spread. Among the crowd sat a large group of people. The members of the Kanoha 11 not participating sat here along with their parents. Among them sat Sonia as well as the groups that had come from Sirate and Karakara to see Naruto compete or in some cases just to see a good fight. Tsunade sat within the Kage's booth with the Mizukage and Tsuchikage to her left, while the Kazikage, Sabaku no Gara sat to her right. Each of the Kage's present were wearing their ceremonial robes, no matter how much they despised them. Tsunade was grinning widely behind her Kage hat, she had seen the betting pool earlier and had convinced Shizun to place a large sum of money on Naruto's fights. On the ground stood the proctor for the tournament Hyuganiji. The recently promoted Jounin couldn't help but think back to the first time he'd been in this arena and faced off against Naruto. At this thought he couldn't help but think of the boy he had thought had been killed so long ago and wonder what new skills he gained. All the fighters were currently gathered in the waiting area being kept from the side of the crowds. Those gathered included three from Iwa, three from Kiri, three from Odo, and three from Konoha. Naruto himself stood with his nose buried in the pages of his own Icha Icha book, though a Jinjutsu made it look black. Still if anyone thought the boy was oblivious to the glares he was receiving from the Kiri and Iwa teams, they would be mistaken. For those of you who are not familiar with the rules this tournament it's simple. The rules are there are no rules. The only thing is if I say a match is over, it's over. Anyone who tries to defy that will be disqualified. Said the Hyuga calmly. Alright then first match. Kasumi of the Hidden Mist vs Katsu of the Hidden Rock. Please come down. Naruto looked down on the competitors for just a moment before turning back to his book. Kasumi was a girl of probably about 13 with light blue hair that went down to her mid-back. She wore a pair of grey shinobi pants and a white shirt. Katsu however looked to be about 15 had black hair and wore black shinobi pants and a grey shirt. The match had been rather good considering Kasumi was at a disadvantage from the start. Being from Kiri most of her jutsu were water-based, which the stadium lacked. On top of that water-based techniques naturally lost against earth-based techniques. Luckily for her Kiri Shinobi had a thing for using Kenjutsu which had helped her out a bit. In the end though Katsu defeated her with barely a scratch. Second match. Tenten of the Hidden Leaf versus Hiroto of the Hidden Sound. Said Niji after the field was cleared. Tension filled the arena almost as soon as that was said. Every Shinobi in the stadium knew one of these two would die this day, most likely Hiroto. Over the past few years Tenten had become quite well known for her skills with weapons. 
After a few short minutes the weapon mistress emerged from the stairwell finding her opponent already on the ground with a smirk on his face. Denton smiled at that, a sadistic gleam entering her normally kind eyes, causing Niji to inwardly shiver. Tenton had gotten like this whenever they encountered any shinobi from Odo in the last few years, determined to bring pain to those who had harmed her at Toto. Erodo was a boy of about 14 with red hair tied back into a ponytail and black eyes. He wore the standard uniform of an Odo genin, grey and black camouflage pants, a black shirt, and a grey and black scarf. So your Kano has famed weapon mistress. You don't look like much. Said Herodo with a smirk. The Odo trash are always cocky. At least until I turn you into pin cushions said Tenton returning the smirk and making her opponent scowl. Tenton of the Hidden Leaf versus Hirodo of the Hidden Sound. Hajim. Said Niji before using Shunshin to leave the field. Tenton like always immediately tossed a kunai towards her opponent before jumping back to create a little space. Hirodo seeing this quickly pulled out a kunai of his own and parried Tenton's. Tenton however had taken this time not to draw a weapon, but to complete a chain of seals. Finally finishing her hand stopped on the seal for bird. Suetan. Bakusha. What a release. Aquatic shockwave. After calling out the name of her jutsu, the girl took a deep breath. Throwing herself forward, she let out her breath, spewing out a massive amount of water. The water formed a massive wave, which Tenton used to ride towards her stunned opponent. Forgive me for ending this quickly. But I want to see Naruto fight. Cried the girl as a katana appeared in her hand, and the wave towered over the stunned Odo Genin. Sidelines. Whoa, I didn't know Tenton knew any jutsus like that. Said Kiba as he looked at the giant wave of water with the rest of the eleven. Remind me never to get on that girl's bad side said Kankiru as several others around him nodded. I told you not to underestimate the youthful flower that is Tenton. She has done nothing but trained for the least three years and has increased her flames of youth significantly. Yelled Guy from his position behind the Chuanans with the other Jounin and Aruka. The Ash Guy Sensei is right Tenton's youthful flames have become an inferno. Screamed Lee as he stood up cheering for his teammate, much to the irritation of his girlfriend. Tsunade Sama I was unaware that Tenton San knew any elemental jutsu much less one of that level. Said Gara in his usual monotone, though Tsunade could tell he was surprised. Yes well you know how much that girl loves her weapons. Even though I've been training her for the past few years that is one thing I think will never change. Said Tsunade with a fond smile on her face. I'm also surprised the girl knows such a high level technique from my village Hokage Dono. Said the Mizukage. Even though Tsunade couldn't see beneath the robe she could tell like her, the Mizukage was a female by voice alone. Yes well Tenton and I share the same affinity so I've spent the last two and a half years teaching her to use it. That's one of the reasons I'm only just now allowing her to take the exam. Said Tsunade though she stopped speaking when the water finally crashed over the Odo Genin. Arena. Erodo panted as he tried to catch his breath on top of the water. He had managed to snap out of his shock in time to jump away and dodge the wave before it crashed onto him. Before he could do anything however the water shot up from behind him and trapped him in a sphere of the liquid. Tsuru no jutsu, a qua prison technique. Said Tenton from behind him her left hand sustaining the technique. Sorry kid but fight's over. Not only do I have you trapped in this little prison of mine, but as you can no doubt figure out you can't move your hands, so no seal making for you. To make things better you only have enough air in there to last for one minute with the way I manipulated that water. Said Tenton. So you have a few choices. The first you could forfeit since you're obviously stuck like that. The second is you can sit in there and drown. And the third and my personal favorite she stopped here and turned her head as the water started to part a few feet from her. Is that I can fill that sphere with lightning and watch you fry. Said another Tenton emerging from the water. Unfortunately for Tenton, Niji took that moment to make himself known and declare Tenton the winner. Having been on the receiving end of that jutsu lately, Niji knew for a fact there wasn't much you could do when trapped in it, if anything at all. But that done the water barrier dropped and the Tenton that was holding it up fell into even more water. The original pouted towards her teammate for ruining her fun before disappearing in a puff of smoke to reappear in the fighter's waiting area. Stance, man that girl's good. Said Katetsu from his position in the stance. The yeah, she managed to end this fight in just three moves, definitely chewing in material. Said Izumo getting a snort from Katetsu. Chewing in my ass. That girl should be a special jounin with that jutsu arsenal. Said Katetsu with a smirk. After a few minutes the arena was clear of water, since Niji had called for someone to remove it. With a quick jutsu Yamato had drained the water from the stadium with one of the many doten jutsu he knew. Looking down on his list for the first round, Niji smirked before reading off the names. Third match. Kamazuru Itsuko of Hidden Rock vs Hyuga Hinata of the Hidden Leaf. Said Niji. As they made their way down Naruto took that time to look over the eye with Kinoichi. She looked to be about 16 and stood eye to eye with Hinata. She wore a black skirt and a grey kimono-like shirt with a grey trim. Finally she had brown eyes and brown hair pulled back into a ponytail that was braided at the end. 
she know from his position within the stands narrowed his eyes behind his glasses at the sight of her. During the Third Great Shinobi War and the battles between Konoha and Iwa, the Aburam and Kamizuru clans had become fierce enemies. The fact that both clans were bug users hadn't been lost to anyone, and it seemed any time two members of those clans were even within ten feet of each other, tension seemed to build. Niji seeing both fighters in position, immediately called a start to the match and quickly retreated. Hinata's eyes snapped open instantly by Akugan flaring just in time to see her opponent launch a swarm of bees towards her. Seeing this Hinata slid herself into a stance that had her left hand cocked back and her right hand turned up under it but not touching. Haki. Kurushu. Called Hinata as she thrust her arm forward making Niji's eyes go wide. Following the call a wave of invisible chakra was launched from the girl's palm, blasting the bees and their creator back towards the wall. Not giving her opponent a second Hinata was off towards the girl nailing her with a palm strike in the chest. The girl's eyes went wide however when her opponent burst into a swarm of bees. The real Itsuko took this moment to jump out from the tree she was hiding in. Smirking she made a single seal before the bees surrounding Hinata reacted and launched their stingers at her. Faster than she could blink the stingers embedded themselves into her everywhere except her face. Well that was bore started Itsuko only for Hinata burst into smoke much to her shock. Eyes widening she jumped to the side just as Hinata burst out from the ground with a palm strike aimed at her jaw. Seeing this the Hyuga girl quickly whipped a few shuriken in her opponent's direction. Sidestepping the projectiles Atsuko flung her arms to each of her sides as more bees launched out from her quickly flying towards the young Hyuga. Hachi Bakudan no Jutsu. Any last words before you die tree hugger? Said Atsuko with a smirk which died down seeing Hinata smirk as well. Yes. Surrender, you've lost. Said Hinata. Atsuko laughed hearing the words from the Hyuga and pulled her hands into the seal for Tiger. Seeing this Hinata shook her head before a single word slipped past her lips. Boom. As soon as the word left her lips Hinata's chakra spiked before a massive explosion occurred. When the smoke cleared Hinata was gone and all that was left was a crater at least 5 feet deep and 10 in diameter. Atsuko had been thrown by the blast and was now reduced to a shivering mess, having had majority of her colony destroyed, leaving only her queen. As he looked around with his Byakugan Niji spotted the real Hinata perched about halfway up the wall in front of him. Winner Hyuga Hinata. Announced a Hyuga genius, signaling both the end of the match and for the medics to come and fetch the shivering mass that was Itsuko. The next two matches had been short. The fourth had been between an Iwa Genin named Daichi and an Odonin named Kauda. The fight if you could call it that had been over faster than most could blink as Daichi had beaten the Odonin with a single punch. The fifth was also short one between a Kirinin named Kaido and another Odonin named Chio, Chio was torn apart. Niji smirked his active by Akugan eyes trained on the booth that the exam's participants were occupying while he kept his face towards the Hokage's booth. The next match Niji knew had purposely been made the last one of the first round. This had given many of the shinobi gathered in the arena as well as some of the spectators more time to arrive. Many of the lords of the various countries had come specifically to see this match after all. Taking a breath Niji calmly exhaled before speaking the words that brought a hush to the entire stadium. The sixth match of the Chuanin selection exam will now begin. Tsukiko of the Hidden Mist and Naruto of the Hidden Leaf please come down. So that's it for today, I will stop here and hope you enjoyed this video if you do please hit the like button, share and subscribe, also don't forget to drink water and do support fanfiction author link in description, take care bye.